Greetings, everybody. My name is Kevin Kocek. I'm the founder and CEO of Chemical Q Device here for Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. This is seminar 147. Uh, this is going to focus on large multimodal models, uh, chemical research with document retrieval. So what's shown here is basically there's two sets of the experiment. I am going to focus on the image-based ones. So these are in uploading five images all at the same time, and then asking one prompt at a time without telling the software or the AI um, where in which image it, it is found. So this is done through, it's called 3.5 Sonnet and ChatGPT 4.0, and then also with Scholar GPT. And um, so this is the first, first portion right here. So this is a this is a manuscript that's up on Chem Archive right now. And the first part really focuses on just having a user prompt one at a time and those five images. And then the large multimodal model is what processes it. And the answer is returned. And on this section, I had to judge it because I don't have another uh, image base LLM, LMM that's appropriate for this. In the second set of experiments, I use large language models, leading large language models, because it's just text. So this is images, but it still kind of gets the point apart across. So the first prompt here, this assigned proton and car carbon peaks for molecule 3F, which is actually here, um, based on its proton NMR, which is this first spe spectrum here, and the 13C uh, NMR here, uh, which is carbon. So these are both the isotopes that are NMR active. The proton is really easy to take. It's the most abundant form of hydrogen. And the C13 is a less abundant form, so it takes longer to take. Identify the image and context that assisted your conclusion. Okay, so I developed this prompt template, and it's based on four previous reports that I had kind of been fine-tuning this more for the specific manuscript. And basically in this one, I provide insight and what the 3.5 Sonnet uh, has to say. Now, 3.5 Sonnet was the best uh, score for this. And the prompt, as you can see, it's not too detailed. I could probably have said, assign every single proton peak and every single carbon peak with a number and then refer back to the diagram, those types of things as well. Um, but I just kept the prompts kind of short. It had four other images that it was that it had to exclude for this specific task. And here's what it came up with is basically it says, I'll analyze both the proton NMR, this is the AI speaking, and 13C NMR uh, provided in image five, which was here. Along with the molecular structure shown, uh, the NMRs, the proton NMR assignments, the singlet at 6.13, which is gonna be this uh, uh, one down field here, and at 5.9 ppm are likely the ter two furon uh, furan ring protons. So if you look at the structure, this is the furan ring, and there's only two protons on it, this one or this one, but they're in two different spots because this proton is most adjacent to this ethyl group. And then this proton here is most adjacent to this, um, you know, uh, well, it's a, a cyano uh, substitution and the cyclohexane. It, it didn't, because I didn't ask for high levels of detail, tell which is which, but it's still pretty good that it can the only thing that the AI is seeing is this prompt. So meaning that this is this is my statement. And then it's also seeing uh, also uh, the, these two spectra, okay? So it says those are the two uh, protons off the furan ring. And then the next one uh, further upfield at the 2.65, which is here, it says uh, two hydrogen likely uh, uh, corresponds to, to the CH2 adjacent to the CN group. So if you go to the CN group, the next carbon is this quaternary carbon here. So it's likely talking about this carbon here, um, uh, that CH2. And it, the next one, it says number three, the quartet at uh, 2.36, we could go down a little bit or we go up feel a little bit more, is likely the CH2 off the ethyl of the um, attached to the furan ring, as opposed to some of these other CH2 groups, because it's still closer to the furan ring, in specific this, you know, the electronegativity of the oxygen uh, here, so uh, that CH2. And then, of course, the multiplicity matters. So if it's next to three neighbors, that, that CH3 group, it's supposed to have that quartet. So the, the AI is picking this up. And then the multiplets at 1.8 to 1.71 4H and 1.6 to 1.52 4H correspond to the four CH2. So these rem remaining uh, four CH2s in the cyclohexane ring. 
which is correct. And then the one that should be the furthest off is the CH3, this methyl at 1.22, which is this one that's most upfield or to the right in the spectrum at 1.22. And then it's going to have, um, you know, this, it, it'll, it'll be a triplet. Um, it'll be three, three hydrogens triplet next to the CH2. Okay. So it did a really good job with that. And again, I kept the prompt short. I didn't get into like excruciatingly detail uh, just to make sure that this would run a along with other prompts too. Okay. So that's a two sentence prompt, uh, basically, as you can see in, in this number one prompt. Now the 13C uh, assignments also did very well. This one won't give you multiplicity, meaning that you can't see how many carbons are next to it. And so we get the 157.9 and the 151.2, and this is AI speaking. It says that these are the two carbons off the furan ring bonded to oxygen too, okay? So they're gonna be these two carbons here. They don't have hydrogens, ones they both, separately are are bonded to the oxygen, um, which are correct as well. All right, so again, I could have said in specific this one and, and labeled peaks and stuff like that. But um, if you were to show this to most people, they would be able to say, okay, well, this one next to this uh, cyanide group, more electron withdrawing than the ethyl group to the side. So this would probably be that carbon that's further uh, downfield there. Okay, and then the other one is the for the cyan cyan group or the cyano group, which isn't as electron withdrawing as the as the oxygen, hence it's further upfield at one twenty one. So it's right here. So it's this carbon, this uh, blue carbon that connected to the oxygen right there. And then the 105.9, 104.5, the two CH uh, carbons of the furan ring. Um, so this is going to be here and here. So again, this. This uh, protein here, that's which is closest to the the cyano uh, substitute, as opposed to the ethyl group, will probably be a little bit further down field um, in that specific case here. So, and again, they're not separated by much. One hundred five point nine versus one hundred four point five. And then the 39 ppm, the carbon attached to both the furan and the height cyclohexane ring uh, here. So this is basically. Uh, so it says the cyclohexane and the furane. So this would be this uh, carbon here. Okay. So keep going. Uh, the CH, so 34.7 ppm, the CH2 of the ethyl group. So that would be here. And then 29, 25, 21 ppm, the CH2 is off the cyclohexane. Uh, followed by the CH3. So sometimes the assignments are a little bit different than proton NMR that we see with the, the uh, I think it was the ethyl there at 34.7. But regardless, it knows how to do spectra. It knows how to do the proton NMR. And again, you could probably, and I may take something like, you know, these five types of spectra and then figure out what the molecule is, something like a, a good problem like that. Okay, so this next one, uh, prompt two. So again, this is one of the five images. All of them were uploaded. And then this is the next question and the AI had to find it. So chat GPT 4.0, uh, I chose for this. Um, and I wanted to give a broad distribution in the manuscript as opposed to in this specific case of 3.5 sonnet was best for uh, at least for the prompts and then tied for another one. Okay, so it says identify, this is mass spec, uh, which, what each M over Z peak means for the two non all 4 oxo 1, 4 dihydroquinolone 3 carboxylic acid phenylamide, this 4A compound uh, mass spectrum. Okay, so identify the image in context that assisted your conclusion. So I've optimized this prompt, <laughs> this prompt to, um, no, it's called prompt uh, uh, engineering. I've engineered this prompt to be, you know, not specific enough. So if you get too specific, a lot of times you just lose the information. So you have to be able to, it's kind of like if you were to say to somebody, it's very similar to talking to people like in a research lab, let's just put it that way. Um, very, very similar. Okay. So we see the mass spectrum here and we see the main peak at, uh, you know, this 39, 391.2387. We also see some other peaks. Now, two of the other models, ChatGPT 4.0 and Scholar GPT, they both um, had some additional information that this one didn't want. Uh, say, for instance, the uh, there was a bigger peak, to, or yeah, basically a higher higher weight peak uh, identified by Scholar GPT, the 781 down here. So 
The Jet GPT-40 response was not the best out of the three, but again, I wanted to show a, a good uh, distribution of results here. And you could read this too. It says, this is the molecular ion peak, this, you know, 391.2387, indicating that the protonated uh, molecular ion of the compound, and this is just how it is in mass spec, the calculated value for this is 391.2380. So it's pulling all this information. We see some of it's from the text. This is just an image, by the way. Um, but it's pulling text from the image, and we're working within the the the. Uh, it's not technically a, a spectrum here because it's not. Um, we're not talking about electromagnetic magnetic fields here, but in the spectra or the spectrum, it's uh, you know pretty clear that it knows what it's doing. It's a picking up on the con context. That was the first condition when I judge these is, does it know what's going on? And in all of these, I think for except one of them, I think more so for the second prompts, the prompt six through 10, it really knew just what is going on here. Like the question I was asking where it is in the specific image in this specific case. Now, the second one is, can it generate the correct, um, uh, you know, the image ID. So sometimes they did abbreviate, I tried, to, I randomized the title so that the title of the images wouldn't show exactly, you know, compared to the, um, what, what was in the images or in the second part, what was in the documents. So I think I chose like six random letters for those. So in this specific one, um, you know, it'll say the specific here, and I believe this one had, you know, picked the, oh, it says the first image, right? The first image contains that. So I have to compare, it's based on the uploads that I provided, okay? So for mass spec, and again, this is not the most complicated mass spec, you know, uh, mass spectrum that you'll see, but, you know, it's good at picking up the structure. It's good at picking up the, um, you know, the spectrum and the text here too. Uh, seeing that in the text, it says 391.2380. And that, uh, the the AI model, you see 391.2380 is picking it up from the text that's located in the image. So more of the story is in previous generations for large language models and large multimodal models, especially before this year, this document retrieval function works very well. And it was proven in uh, basically four different reports, or actually two different most recent reports uh, before this manuscript came out. And, you know, it's, it's just, it just works well. I've tried other types, it's called retrieval augmented generation, and I'll, you know, point to some, it's more for external databases, but I just did not get the same level of performance as I did using uh, document retrieval, which is the paperclip icon within 3.5 Sonnet. And now we're talking specifically for chemistry, okay? And then also for chat GPT 4.0, um, you know, similar types of features. So this next one, and I run 2D NMR. So E, it's called EHSQC. Now this specific one is a TR nosy. So the way it works is instead of looking at, so in a proton NMR that looks at the through through bond interaction, so multiplicity, these types of things. This is really uh, based on space. So you see these arrows here that correlate to one another. Those are what these off peaks are. This the diagonal peaks are typically that is the same pro that is the same proton that you're looking at at the two axes. Okay. So you look at one and then you go across and then you see does it correlate with this other proton peak? And it, that's that's realized in the spectrum um, if there's um, you know uh, additional blue dots or red dots or you know you typically see the the blue dots here. So a two D NMR gives you different uh, additional information. Now this first block of paragraph that I put in the manuscript is basically there's another compound in here at least. So, so these peaks that aren't labeled, I didn't tell the AI that um, there was other molecules in here. It did the best that it could. Uh, based on the ones that this image, you know, these assignments on the structure and then the numbers on the side to read these and then report back. Okay. So there, there is other, and this is a more complex kind of situation, uh, what's going on here. 
So it basically says the aromatic protons, which is labeled in 2, 6, 8, 3, 5, 11, and 12 over here in the upper left-hand corner, show several cost peaks among themselves, indicating the their spatial proximity in the aromatic rings. So that would not be the ones on the diagonal, it would be the ones off to the diagonal. So these ones are correlating to each other. And um, you know these are basically expected to happen, okay? And then there are cross peaks between the aromatic protons and the aliphatic uh, protons between the aromatic protons uh, and six prime. So basically you have to go through all of these and I could see it best if I start on the left axis and then go to the right and, you know, basically see, uh, you know, six prime to the aromatic ring and the pepper pepperdine. So th these types of things. So I went through and I did check these and they look good. And it's, it's similar to the first uh, prompt where I didn't give it a ton of, uh, information. I, I didn't say assign numbers or use the numbers in here. Because again, sometimes when you do include a ton of information in that first sentence, and I would say this second sentence for people that want to build off me, identify the image and context that assisted your conclusion. Don't go any more detail than that because it'll it'll give it to you. Okay. But if you try to get too specific, and this is, you know, if we're August right now, mostly uh you know, basically a little bit uh, past the first half halfway mark is um, that's just how it is, right? And I've seen other types of prompt templates that are very complex and you're doing it in different parts of the software. And I, for complex, you know, chemistry in specific, I prompt engineered these to, to give really good results, right? And that's that's just what's happening here. And then further along, it says there are numerous cross peaks in the aliphatic region one to four, indicating interactions between the various CH2 groups. Um, so one to four, so these would be these off peaks here, okay, that we're seeing uh, mostly blue, okay? So, and a lot of times, like when I ran 2D NMR, uh, you know, in research is that you sometimes get phasing. So red would be like a, a say for instance, a CH2 or a CH3 and then, um, you know, a different color like blue might be a, a CH2. Uh, so sometimes you can get the phasing information uh, from here. But regardless, I was I was shocked that it was able to a do a 2D MR this well, and you know just seeing that it it does understand what's going on between the structure, the the two axes, um, you know the mostly the off peaks, the correlations. So this was kind of like, okay, th these are really good results, you know, to share. And this is why I made the, the manuscript. So this next one is basically, I provided this image, uh, what substitute reaction should be used in minimum number of steps to improve the conversion from S11 to EBL 3025. S11 is one of the reactants. And there's also this uh, diamine here, this ethylene diamine. And then the EBL 3025 is the product. Identify the image in the context that assisted your conclusions. So I gave this one to Scholar GPT. The supplementary for this manuscript is on Chem Archive, and it contains all of the prompts for the answers of the large multimodal models, and it includes all of the, um, you know, what was given to the large language models for the second set of the manuscript as well, um, and then the answers of the judges too. Okay. So in this specific one, we have this re these two reactants, basically, this S11 and, and this diamine. And then you have methanol, THF, uh, you know, room temp. Sodium borohydride is the key reducing agent here. This is at room temp at 16 hours. And so the prompt was, so the, this figure five is in the manuscript, okay? So basically, a lot of the information, you can get typically general information from these LMMs or you can get more specific. Now the specific information that Scholar GPT gave was lithium aluminum hydride, but as you may know, this is a strong reducing agent. So this would actually probably interact with this amide group or amide, you know, depending on how you say it. So it this reaction only needs functionality with the diamine here. So the main thing is the sodium borohydride, okay? So this is two steps. Now, when the other two that I gave it to, and again, I split up these, you know, be between 3.5 sauna, it was just doing so well. And then I needed to show Scholar GPT here is it picked the lithium aluminum hydride. Now, 3.5 sauna gave it lith or sodium borohydride 
acetate and then another another borohydrates that's cyano based okay and then um you know probably a lot more realistic uh types of reactants or that would be a reagent in order to get this um uh, new functional group going from an aldehyde uh to this essentially this this diamine you know you see this n you know ethylene and then n you know show up right here okay so that's just what happened. And again, um, it does say, you know, uh, solvent optimization, uh, direct reduction amination in one step. So the 3.5 sonic and then this one, the Scholar GPT, it does use chlorinated solvents, which can be an issue these days uh, because, you know, that's sometimes you have to actually do reactions that are not chlorinated or not halogenated. So, but it did these two, you know, the Scholar GPT and the 3.5 Sonnet, um, you know, one step reactions in, instead of these two. It's just for the Scholar GPT that we see here with a lithium aluminum hydride, probably being a little bit too strong of a uh, reducing agent, as opposed to, you know, what's going on here um, with the 3.5 Sonnet with other types of borohydrides. Okay. And then here's number five. So this is all I'm going to cover. And then I've got one more slide after this. So Explain to me in detail what each of the unlabeled impurity peaks are for NL74 as a pain. Uh, identify the image and context. So I gave this one also to ChatGPT 4.0. And this one was a little bit more general. And again, every single one of the responses by, or four out of the five of the 3.5 sonnets were better. And then one of them was just actually tied for one of the other models. So it, it gave general information. So again, how I scored these, and you're seeing these numbers, this got a nine out of 10. And you can look back previously in the video or in the manuscript, what was, um, you know, what was given for those is it got uh, basically a yes, if it could understand the context. Okay. So I gave it a why, if it knew what was going on in the prompt and it knew what was going on in the image. Okay. For this section of uh, prompts one through five, I gave it another point if it did the uh, image location well, which I believe this one did well. And then I gave it another point. So three points. Um, if it understood in general. So I gave this a general answer. You know, when it starts giving kind of like this broad 0 0.5 to 2.5 region, it's not the best that, you know, can be done, which 3.5 sonnet, which is done by Claude. Their website is claude.ai uh, is how I uh, access that. Okay. So it does give some other kind of 1.5 singlets and, you know, 2.5 to 3, 3.5. So and 4.7. So this one got a general, uh, basically a general score uh, for this specific one, a nine out of 10. Uh, it just wasn't as specific as the, the sonnet or for the, this specific molecule. Okay. So this is basically in the manuscript. So we see 3.5 sonnet just taking the day with this. Um, I think the main things sometimes, you know, okay. So chat GPT, runs chat gpt 4.0 and scholar gpt 3.5 sonnet runs off of claude.ai which is a website okay i gave all of these the five images and then i just one after another prompt you know the five prompts and 3.5 sonnet actually on the second set with a six through ten actually didn't perform well and it was the other two that performed really well according to the two judges uh, it was Llama 3.5, Llama 3.1, 4, uh, 4, 405 billion, and it was the Nematron 4, 340 billion. Um, so it was flipped for the second set that I gave just documents or PDFs of supplementaries of the of uh, papers, but not the papers themselves, because this is where the bulk of the you know chemical information is at. And so we see in this specific set, so it's prompt one, two, three, four, five. Um, like I said, for 3.5 Sonnet, better, actually tied for two of them, um, but you could see prompts one, one through three, you know, it's just night and day between the other uh, GPT-based ones. So as far as what limited the GPT, it's probably some document retrieval issue, but uh, th say, for instance, they did a lot better with PDFs. And then in this case, this 3.5 Sonnet did a lot better with just images. Now, again, the, if I try to do this as PDFs 
with the images inside of it, instead of, you know, uh, taking a screen capture is I, it, it just had a hard time with that, like pretty much all the models. So that was a limitation too, that I could only use images in this case. And then the, in the second set, um, I could ask it more text with the PDFs and it's been doing text forever. So everybody knows the multimodal feature is still catching up, but I think the 3.5 Sonnet is a little bit ahead of its time based on the performance I see with chemistry, okay? And chemistry research and, and basically mass spec, proton NMR, C3, uh, C13 NMR, and um, reactions, and you know these, these types of things. And there was more things that's covered in, in the second set. So I want to go over this because the manuscript is up. Uh, you can download it from chemarchive.org. Uh, I'll put the link into the... Um, it's not the comments, but it's the main kind of explanation box after the video here. And you can download that. You can access the supplementary. And if you want to look at things just by prompt, you know, so you see like there's a specific type of prompt. You want to see the AI, how well it did. You can do that. Or you can use the supplementary, you know, based on model. So you just search for 3.5 Sonnet over and over and over or ChatGPT 4.0 or Scholar GPT um, over and over and over. And it has judges answers to these two. So also refer uh, for the references, these are all in the manuscript as well. And again, you can catch this uh, basically through the, um, through the discussion se section here as far as where to get the manuscript, okay? Uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in and, you know, as this charges forward with AI and, you know, basically seeing things that we've never seen before. Uh, Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, this is 147 for LMM Chemical Research with Document Retrieval. Uh, thanks for everybody for coming on. Have a good night and have a good uh, productive rest of the week. Take care. Bye.